To find the linear speed on the satellite, let's first try to describe the forces acting on the satellite. In this case, there is only one. It is the gravitational force between the satellite and the Earth. According to Newton's law of gravitation, the gravitational force acting between two objects is equal to big G, the constant, times the product of their masses divided by r squared. In this case, let's let big M equal the mass of the Earth and small m equal the mass of the satellite. And r refers to the distance between the center of mass of both objects. Since the satellite is moving in a circular path around the Earth, then this gravitational force should be equal in magnitude to the centripetal force acting on the satellite as it rotates through orbit. This formula is, of course, m times v squared over r, where v is the linear speed we seek, and small m is once again referring to the mass of the satellite. Since v is the variable we want to solve for, let's algebraically rewrite this to solve for v. These two m's can cancel out, and this r disappears, removing the square of the other r here. We can now take the square root of both sides to just solve for v. And this is our formula for the linear speed. This is the formula we want to find, and it's what we will use to solve for v. It's worth noting, though, that r, since it refers to the distance between the center of mass of both objects, it does not refer to the altitude that we're given, because the Earth is such a large radius that we'll have to account for that as well if we want to find the distance between the center of masses. So I'm going to say that r is actually equal to the radius of the Earth, which can be looked up as about 6.37 times 10 to the 6 new, uh, meters, plus the altitude we're given of 160 kilometers. Except I'm going to write this in meters by multiplying kilometers by 10 to the 3. This gives us an orbital radius of about 6.53 times 10 to the 6th power of meters. We can plug that in for r, and also plug in the values for the constant big G and the mass of the Earth. You can look those up fairly easily. And we find that the linear speed of the satellite's orbit is equal to about 7.82 times 10 to the third power of meters per second. Part b asks us to find a period of the orbit. The formula for period can be derived fairly simply from mechanics. Since we know that some linear speed is equal to a distance divided by a time, it can be shown quite simply algebraically that time is therefore equal to a distance divided by a speed. In this case, the distance that the object is moving in one period is going to be equal to the path of a circular orbit, in other words, the circumference of some circle. Since the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 times pi times the radius of the circle, that means that our formula that we're looking for, that will give us the period of orbit, is equal to 2 pi times the radius of orbit divided by the speed. Both of these unknowns, r and v, are variables that we found in part a. Plugging in our r value for r in this equation, and then plugging in the value for the speed that we found in part a, we find the period of orbit to be about 5.25 times 10 to the 3 seconds. When dealing with periods of orbit, especially with satellites, it's often more useful to write the result in units of, of minutes rather than seconds. So take the result we just calculated, and then multiply it by the conversion factor between minutes and seconds, so 60 seconds and 1 minute, and we find the same period as 87.5 minutes.